Good morning and welcome to Cindy's Kitchen. We're back again today and today is an exciting day. If you're brand new, welcome. Now I'm gonna tell you, if you're not up for a lot of talking, this may not be the video for you. There's a difference, I think, between a cooking video where they fast forward over everything and a cooking community where we get to know each other and we talk and we chitty chat and it's about 30, 45 minutes and we have fun. So if you're up for that, then stay, say hello, tell us where you're from and, um, and we're gonna have fun today. Good morning, Julie from Northwest Houston. Oh, Beverly from Hudson, North Carolina. Good to see you. Oh, everybody having coffee this morning? It's, uh, it's funny about weather, right? So in Houston, um, in Houston last week it was seven and yesterday it was 80. Ha! <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> Good morning, Gail. Sunny and warming in Chicagoland. That's a good news. That's good news. Joan is thawing out in Illinois. I'm glad that you guys are thawing out. That's wonderful. Oh, trying to trying to get awake. <clears throat> I've been awake for quite a while, but you know. <laughs> Hello, Joanne. Oh, Teresa's here. Good to see you, Teresa. You know what's really weird is you guys are saying hello. Oh, hello from More Polish Pottery. Good morning, Rebecca. Rebecca has got a More Polish Pottery live show at noon right after us. Hey, Alice, good morning. Nina, Sunny Lenore, North Carolina. Jan, still chilly in Michigan, she says. Good morning, Charlene, who is my mom. <laughs> All right. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and get started because we have a lot of food to make today. Casey, hi, good to see you. Um, so today we're gonna be talking, uh, we're, we're cooking for a cause and it's uh, meals for a mission. <clears throat> Our church uh, that we belong to is uh, here in Houston, it's called Wynwood Presbyterian Church. And one of the missions that we support is called the Mission of Yahweh. Now, Yahweh obviously is a Hebrew word for, for the name of God, right? And so it is a women's and a homeless women's and children's shelter. Uh, so good morning, Joy from Michigan. Heather's here. Deb's here from sunny North Carolina. Anyway, this particular mission, like I said, is for homeless women and children. And so that really touches my heart. Um, our church uh, has one Friday a month where we feed everybody lunch. And so generally what happens is uh, many people in our church will, pro will, will prepare like nine by 13 dishes of spaghetti or King Ranch casserole or a casserole of some sort um, and, or desserts. They make cookies and brownies and things like that. I thought since we're cooking, right, we might as well cook for a cause. And so today we're making big food, like a lot. So when you're asking for recipes, probably not a, a good, you copy this recipe day because everything is gonna be in bulk. That being said, you certainly could pick the ingredients and go way down so you could make it for your family if you so desire. Well, thank you, Karen, I appreciate it. So we need to get started. So let's raise our coffee cups and we can do our coffee clinks, whether you're drinking coffee or hot tea or lemonade or water, let's do our clinks, raise and clink. Last sip. Mm, 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 mm. Oh, Lois Ann is here from Chantilly, Virginia. Shirley's here, Sandy's here. All right, so let's get started. Let me tell you what I've got going right now. I went ahead, you guys have seen me do Hamburger magic so many times. I went ahead and you can see on the back burner the tall silver. That's my steamer. I have three pounds of hamburger meat in the steamer steaming. Good morning, Mandy. Good to see you. And then in the orange pot, I have 24 ounces, so two 12 ounce bags of elbow macaroni. And it is cooking. So I'm going to give it a stir. 
because we want, we got a, a lot. All right. The dogs are not behaving this morning. Stop it. I've had to learn Spanish. So while all that's going on, we are going to go ahead and start on dessert because we want dessert done, right? Here's what we're going to do with our Texas sheet cake. We're going to start with a small saucepan, and I've got two sticks of butter in here. Really unsalted, salted. I think this is salted, but I'm not certain. It doesn't really matter. Okay, so there you go. Two sticks of butter. To that, we're going to add one cup of water and a half of a cup. I'm going to tilt down a half of a cup of cocoa powder. Now, this is just kind of a generic cocoa powder, and this is a quarter cup so that I can fit it in there. So one, oops, it didn't all dump out, there we go, and two. Now we're gonna put this on the stove top because we need all the butter to melt and we need the cocoa and all that. Dessert first, I know, right? So on the stove top, this is going. Well, oh, there it went, okay. We're gonna let that all melt and get yummy. And so then we need Big old bowl, and this is the, the mega big old bowl, right? Um, this is what's called an artesian bowl. What's the difference from the one I normally use? The one I normally use is a little shorter and edges out. This one is deep, because I've got a lot of stuff to put in here. So, that's why. Deep, 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 I tell you. I'm gonna push you back just a bit. All right, so while we're adding things, I'm gonna tell you all about the mission of Yahweh. Very awesome, awesome. Um, in great um, organization. All right, we're going to start. It's funny because you guys know my Polish pottery addiction, right? Um, I'm using almost every one of my canisters today. <laughs> All right, we're going to start with brown sugar. See, this is my brown sugar. And we need a cup of brown sugar. I'm going to use my half a cup and go in twice. It's pretty, isn't it? I know that... Um, uh, more Polish pottery is uh, unpacking things every day. So, you know, well, the Texas sheet cake is a little slice of heaven, isn't it, Tommy? I know. All right, so this is light brown sugar. You can use light or dark. If you remember, the only difference between the two is dark brown sugar has um, uh, more molasses in it. That's why it's dark, okay? So we have a half a cup. Wait, no, we have a whole cup, because this was a half a cup. A whole cup of brown sugar. It's not an addiction, it's a hobby. <laughs> there you go, I love that. My more Polish pottery is not an addiction, it's a hobby. Okay, so we've used our brown sugar, um, and we're not gonna need that anymore. Uh, let's see, and now we need, oh, two teaspoons of vanilla. This is my homemade vanilla, remember when we made this? This is my spice. Remember that I used with uh, Captain Morgan's. That's what we made with this one. All right, so we need two teaspoons, not tablespoons, two teaspoons of vanilla. Wait, oh no, it doesn't go in here yet. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me put that back in there. Let me put that back in there. Does it go in there? Da, 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 two sticks of butter, no larger baking soda. No, no, no. I'm putting in a teaspoon anyway. It goes in the frosting. But I think the cake needs it too. So there you go. Um, it's been a while since I made this. I had to pull the recipe. All right, now we're gonna need um, flour. How much flour do we need? We need two cups. Two cups. Ugh, look at this one, see? We're gonna use all of my canisters today. Two cups. Again, I'm gonna use my half a cup just so I can get in, okay? One cup, one half. One, there's one cup. Then see why I told you you needed a big bowl? Because we got a lot of ingredients going in this Texas sheet cake. And there, two whole cups of flour. Isn't this pretty? This was from a couple of years ago. I love that pattern. All right, now we're gonna need granulated sugar and we're gonna need a cup. Ooh, look how pretty that is. A cup of granulated sugar. Look at my little, isn't that pretty? <laughs> I have a scoop in there. The scoop actually is right at a quarter cup. So um, that's fun. So one cup of white granulated sugar. Uh, if When people are watching from like the UK or from other countries, 
you have to actually say granulated sugar. You can't just say sugar, even though it's something that we take. Uh, they call it castor sugar, not granulated. They call it castor sugar. Good morning, Charmely and Yvonne. Good to see you. All right. Then we're going to need a half a teaspoon of salt. So I'm just going to, you know, I know you're supposed to measure, but I'm just, I'm just doing. Okay. Salt and we're going to need baking soda. Remember the baking soda is in the orange. The baking powder is usually in a white container. All right. And so baking soda, we're going to need a teaspoon. Hold on. Let me, I got that, this on here. I may need my sous chef in here in a second because that stuff needs to be stirred. Hey, Charm. Okay, so one teaspoon, did I say that? One teaspoon. One teaspoon of baking soda. Okay, and let's see what else. Oh, cinnamon, a teaspoon. Now, you know that since Joanne turned me on to this, I'm all on to the Saigon cinnamon. If you're new, oh, it's like a, it's like a symphony. Could you give that stuff a stir? Jessica, Jessica's gonna stir. All right, and so we need one teaspoon of Saigon cinnamon. You can use regular cinnamon if that's all you have, but I have to tell you, since I started using this, it's like all that and oh my gosh. All right, I'm gonna use my Danish butter whisk, cause you know I am, and give that just a stir. I did not, um, I did not sift. And I never have sifted when I made a Texas sheet cake. So the rest of you, maybe you did. I don't know. All right, let me check our, sauce, our saucepan. Everything is melted. Hold on just one sec. Thank you, dear. Oh, well, that butter is not all the way melted, but I'm going to do this. I know, Saigon cinnamon. It, for those of you who haven't tried it yet, the butter, there's one little piece of butter that's not melted. For those of you, this was our two sticks of butter, our half a cup of um, uh, cocoa powder, unsweetened cocoa powder, and a cup of water that we heated on the stove. You see how this is? Okay. Um, I'm, I'm just going to give it a stir to ensure that all of our cinnamon is melted and um, the butter is, everything's all good. Yeah, the Saigon cinnamon is like, I think it's like a, a symphony versus just listening to piano music. Piano music is fine, but the symphony, oh yes. All right, so we're gonna add the contents of this saucepan in and we're gonna stir as we go, okay? I'm gonna stir a little bit. Um, I know that some of you, because you know Rebecca has said several times, you shouldn't add hot, you know, really hot or, you know, stuff to, because you don't want your pan to crack. But quite frankly, um, if, you, if you're stirring while you're putting it in, you've got enough air in there. Um, it is. Hey, Bess, good to see you. So, so the mission of Yahweh um, actually has been around since 1961. Um, it was uh, founded by a nun, Sister Helen Gay, and it started in her own house, which I think is just phenomenal because you know what? Charity starts at home. It now consists of a 12-building campus that has dormitories, a dining hall, recreation facilities, classrooms, a retail shop, um, and a neighborhood food pantry. So this has turned into a huge, huge uh, mission uh, for uh, homeless women and children. So, all right, we're giving that a stir. Ooh, I know I could use the mixer, I got it out and I plugged it in just in case, but I think we're gonna be okay. All right, first of all, that looks phenom, right? Phenom. All right, so now I, I dribbled and made a mess. Oh well. <laughs> all right, so now we're gonna add some sour cream. So um, we have half a cup of sour cream. You know that when Jessica had to go to the grocery store today to get the only thing I forgot yesterday was sour cream. And do you know that the only sour cream they had in the entire grocery store was organic? This was like five bucks. Five bucks for sour cream. Oh, silly, silly, silly. Although some of you are like, you only do organic and I've, I've irritated you, so I'm sorry. But five bucks for sour cream. All right, so a half a cup of sour cream goes in there. 
Let's use the spatula so we don't lose any yummy sour cream. All right, there we go. And then we gotta add the other, the, the vanilla that we were supposed to put in. I was supposed to wait and put the vanilla in there. So I'm gonna add the other teaspoon, okay? The other teaspoon of vanilla that I was supposed to add. Okay, and finally, finally, well, let me, let me do that. Give that a stir. I want my sour cream in there. And then the last thing that we're gonna put in here is uh, two eggs. Anthony, Claudia, good morning. Good to see you. All right. Ooh. Here we go. Um, the nice thing about, uh, have you ever heard of a Mexican, Mexican nutmeg? No, I have not. Oh my, I got a trash bowl. Okay, here we go. Here's my trash bowl. Isn't that funny? Beautiful Polish pottery in moonlight is my trash bowl. You gotta chuckle. All right, so one egg goes in and another egg goes in. Ta and da. There we go. So our church, uh, you bought a 16 ounce sour cream. It was 99 cents. Yeah, Gail, that would have been lovely, wouldn't it? Uh, yeah. That would have been lovely. Had, I went to the store yesterday because I had to go to the hospital and have a test. I had to have a <clears throat> CT scan. It's so funny. I stopped by the grocery store on the way home, so I had the CT scan. And I still had the hospital bracelets on. And the, the cashier that was checking me out, oh, you have hospital bands. Are you okay? And I, so I, I looked down and went, oh, yeah, I just had to get some tests done. Oh, what kind of test? And I'm thinking, well, this is getting a little personal, isn't it? And, and I said, oh, I, I just had a, a CT scan. Oh, what's wrong with you? I'm like, nothing, just, it was just kind of odd, I thought. Anyway, okay. Now we're going to, I preheated my oven to 350 degrees. That's our whole cake batter. Because this is going to the mission, I, and so normally I would make this in a sheet pan, my sheet pan. I got the aluminum sheet pan that's the exact same size. I will say I'm going to cook it like this because, you know, these aren't the sturdiest, right? And so this will make it firm and so the cake won't mess up. Um, normally, I use Polish pottery, so I don't have to uh, spray. But because this is an aluminum and we don't want anybody to lose part of their cake, I'm spraying the pan. All right, so here we go. Let me put this here. Move this. You think with all this room I have, I wouldn't have issues, right? All right, and here we go. We're pouring in. Look at the lovely chocolate. Oh, yum, yum, yum. Look how gorgeous that is. Now, you might be curious why I decided to do a cake because normally I have a problem doing cakes because you have to cook one ahead of time because to frost a cake, you need to let it cool completely before you frost the cake. Not so with the Texas sheet cake. With the Texas sheet cake, you actually frost it while it's warm. Oh, that's part of the delight, let me just tell you. So that meant we can get all of this done while we're still here. All right, so there we go. I'm gonna spread this out just so we hit all the edges. So pretty. This is my favorite dessert, my favorite, favorite dessert. All right, into a 350 degree oven, 18 to 20 minutes, we'll keep an eye on it. It's cold. Oh, I'll put it in the oven, okay. All right, so I'm gonna move this, and then you're gonna chuckle. Is Melinda on? I don't, I didn't see Melinda come on. Ooh, did you use spray on the pan? I did. Okay, here we go, look at this. Big bowl, it's not Polish pottery, but I needed a huge bowl. And several months ago, one of our viewers, Melinda, sent me this big spoon. Well, it was kind of hanging on a wall, right? I had it, but today, I thought this would be really good for stirring. So there you go. <laughs> Okay, so remember, um, I started out for our um, Mexican goulash. We did three pounds 
of hamburger meat. And you guys have seen me do, um, I'm gonna need butter, sour cream, and cocoa when I get done. All right, we gotta, we gotta move a lot of things over here. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna push this here. No, I'm gonna put that there. Oops. And I'm gonna go get the meat. So now, normally what I do, whoo, ready? Meat sauna. Shoo, you need a facial? That's a hamburger facial, I'm telling you. All right, so normally what I would do is after the hamburger, I need my masher. Here we go. I'm gonna tilt you this direction just so you can see what's going on. All right, so here's the big steamer. And so normally I put the three pounds of hamburger meat in here and then I use the masher, the potato masher. I used to just use a big wooden spoon and beat it to death just to break up so that it's in small pieces. Um, but you guys told me about using the potato masher. And so now that's all I do. That's the fun thing about this show. We get to share. All right. The great thing, if you're brand new and doesn't, haven't seen Hamburger Magic before, if you steam it, Instead of cooking it in a pan, all the grease, all the fat, all the oil goes down into the water underneath and you're not having to eat it. So I like that. All right, so here we go. You see, there's the meat all cooked in there. I'm gonna dump it in our big plastic bowl. And away this goes, and away we go. Ugh. Look at all these noodles. Tons and tons of noodles. I wanted to do, because it's a women's and children's shelter, I wanted to do something that was nutritious, but also would be fun for kids. And quite frankly, elbow macaroni, it's a win. Don't you think? Elbow macaroni is a win. But we need some protein. So I started off with three pounds of hamburger meat. So you saw that. I'm gonna tilt you this way now. I also have two cans of, um, and I'm using chili beans. You can use whatever kind of beans, pinto beans or whatever. I'm really trying to amp up the protein content, all right? Because, you know, they, they I, I want this to be good. I, just because it's for a mission, I don't want it to be eh, okay, right? We're gonna use our big spoon, look at this. Double, double, toil and trouble. All right, so there's all of our protein how many quarts is my steamer? You know, I don't know. It's big. I don't know. I'm sorry. Maybe I'll, I'll look on, I'll see if it says it on the bottom, but it's way too hot right now. All right, so the protein we have is our hamburger meat and our beans. Now to that, this bowl may not be big enough, I'm telling you. Uh, let me see if there's any, I need a spoon. I need a spoon. I'll use it. Let me see if there's any. I think they have soaked up all the water, so I think we can just dump it in there. That's a hard thing. You know, you're supposed to, when you cook macaroni. Uh, hey, Anita and Judy, we're cooking for the mission today. So this is 24 ounces of pasta, and you know that when you cook your pasta, you're really supposed to have six quarts of water. Okay, I should have probably done it in two separate pans, but I did not. So, ton of Oh, elbow macaroni. Okay, hold on. I have to, some of it's stuck just a little because, you know, too much, and that's why it's stuck because too much macaroni, not enough water. All right, let me do that. And we'll tilt. We have people in our church that do this every month. Now, not, not huge like this, maybe not. Most people will make like a nine by 13 of whatever it is they're making. Now, so now we have some fun stuff, right? We have um, two different kinds of protein and we have pasta in there. So I'm hoping the kids will think that's fun, but I do want this to be good for them. I, I do want it to be good. So what I've done is I've gotten two, these are huge. These are 32 ounces. These are frozen mixed vegetables. 
Okay? Um, skizzers. Oh, there we go. Mm. Got to get the skizzers. Because I wanted... Good morning, Kathy and Jan and Tabitha. Good to see you. Um, I wanted this to be nutritious as well. Because we've been through a lot. And we need to give them as much as we can from our heart. Right? All right, so... This is huge. Gonna need a bigger boat, right? Look at all that. Can you see? We're over the top, almost. We'll have to be, we'll have to be very careful how we stir, right? I know, you're like, how are you gonna get this to them? And I'll show you in just a second. I, at first I got a huge one and then I thought, no, no, no. And so I'm subdividing it into four different pans. Good morning, Kathleen and Carol. Good to see you. Isn't this funny? This huge, 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 huge. All right, now, this is great, except where's the seasoning? We didn't really have any seasoning. So, the first thing I'm going to do is two tablespoons. Well, actually, no, I'm going to use all that's left. We'll see how much is left in here. Let me see. Where is my, here we go, um, of taco seasoning? Because this is a Mexican-flavored uh, uh, casserole. Now, traditionally... I would do probably two tablespoons, uh, or a tablespoon to two tablespoons per pound of hamburger meat. And so, you know, obviously you saw everything I did, right? That's a lot. Okay, just empty it out. There we go. So now we have that seasoning. I'm gonna try not to use anything too spicy because we don't know who's eating. But we do need um, some enchilada sauce, right? That's not spicy, but it's also gonna give us, so this is a uh, 10 ounce can of enchilada sauce. I also wanted to put some tomatoes in here because how can it be a Mexican casserole, really, without some tomatoes? Um, in my pantry, I had, so you know, you'd think I'd just get two big ones, but I checked the pantry first. So I had two small cans of diced tomatoes, Nina and Colleen are watching. Good morning. There we go. And then I've got one big can. Big can, petite, tomato, diced tomatoes. I didn't, I'm not draining these because even though I've cooked my noodles, my, I want this to have lots and lots of flavor. Okay? Look at this. Look how huge this is. We're feeding an entire mission. Lydia, we're cooking for a cause. We're, we're making lunch for a women's and children's mission. The great thing about the mission of Yahweh is they also provide outreach services to low-income families that are in that neighborhood. Um, they serve, um, they do donations of food and clothing and school supplies and other necessities. Um, and they actually feed all the kids when school's out. So that's a cool thing. Um, obviously, the past couple of years have been rough. Uh, there was an explosion in the area uh, from a grinding company, and then COVID-19, and then, of course, the quarantine, and then uh, last week did not help. So they've already had, they had burst pipes just like we did. You're from Virginia. Good to see you, Tabitha. Um, but you know what? No matter what happens, the doors are always open for families in crisis. It really is a unique refuge that not only gives food and clothing and shelter, but it's also, um, they're, they really tried really diligently to help the, the people that come to become self-sufficient and uh, productive members of society. So they, they do job training, they provide job leads, um, they collect business clothing uh, so that, you know, because if you're trying to go apply for a job and you don't have nice clothes, that might make a difference. The last thing I'm going to add to this, and again, it's probably okay with the seasoning right now. Um, I am going to add some mild salsa. Why? Well, you, I know you're probably surprised that you didn't see any garlic and you didn't see any onions. And so one of the reasons I'm using this large can of salsa is because not only do we have tomatoes in there, uh, but we also get onions and garlic and, you know, peppers and stuff. So there we go, all in there. Welcome to everybody new. Hello, Jacqueline, nice to see you. All right, look at this. Is this not yummy? 
several of those homes in Fredericks. That's awesome. Anyway, so we collect food. Uh, we collect clothing. So our church does a lot with Mission of Yahweh. They are, they are one of our pet projects. Okay, so here we go. We're not going to cook this because they're going to serve it for lunch tomorrow. So we're going we're gonna to bag it up and then they're going to take it on. What I did is I got um, four of these. Now, I got this size because it came with the plastic lids. And I really want to be able to cover this with foil and then put the plastic lid on it so it's easier to carry. Easier to carry. Hold on, let me check the cake. Oh, cake's up here. Nope, not done yet. All right, so here we go. I'm going to use, uh, oh, look. Oh, things get moved and then I can't find. Hold on one second. Uh, da, da, da. No. Okay, I'm going to use, look at this. I'm just going to get my measuring cup and start putting it in the pan. Look at that. Now, if you wanted to make one like this, you certainly could, um, you know, <laughs> you, you don't wanna make it this big. I don't know, it depends on, like the, the Gingler family, they feed a lot. Maybe that this would be something you could eat for days and days and days, or weeks and weeks and weeks. <laughs> but you certainly could. Uh, make this recipe with hamburger and pasta and veggies and beans and tomatoes. So you saw all the basic things that went into this um, casserole. And, uh, but, but I think it's fun. All right, so see how full it is? So that's the first one. Oh, I can get that out of there. And we'll start on the second one. Um, the mission of Yahweh uh, can only support 50 to 90 residents at a time, which is sad because, you know, I'm sure in your community as well, um, there are big needs for women and children, homeless women and children, and uh, always a big need. And so that's hard to not be able to, um, uh, to, to be able to serve everyone. Uh, but they do supply, they do support, uh, whether it be with lunches like we're doing right now or clothing. I didn't pre-cook my frozen veggies. Will they get cooked through in the oven? Yes, Kathleen, because I let them thaw out. They're not real. They weren't really frozen. I let them thaw out. So they're room temperature. And so it'll be just fine because, you know, the if you remember, frozen veggies are, are parboiled anyway. They're already kind of cooked. Hey, Janet. Okay, we're, we're cooking for a mission today. Uh, Jess, I'm gonna need some help moving those out of the way, please. All right, we're almost there. I may have to move the big spoon. Let me move the big spoon. Um, anyway, so, but they help, they end up helping over 3,000 people. It is a good recipe for a church picnic, right? Okay, so I think we're gonna end up with three full ones. Let me see, yes, there we go. So I got four, but we ended up with three full containers of, there we go. So see, there's the last one. So three full containers of this. I'm gonna cover it with foil, and then I'm gonna put the plastic lid on top, and that'll make it a little easier to tote. Probably also when I take it up to the church, I'm going to have to put it on sheet pans just to make it easier to carry. So I have one left over. There you go. All right. Now we look at all the cans we have. We have trash everywhere, don't we? All right. If you're interested in supporting the Mission of Yahweh, their website is um, Mission of Yahweh. So M I S S I O N. O F Y A H W E H dot org, Mission of Yahweh dot org. Um, if you saw when we did the tag for the show today, you could have seen uh, how to spell that. Um, they'd have volunteer opportunities if you're in the Houston area, um, but they can take any donations of any size, um, cash, Walmart cards whatever you can send them. Uh, so Wynwood, our church, provides lunch on the fourth Saturday. I said Friday. It's the fourth Saturday of every month. And we do um, 
uh, a meal and a dessert, right? And so uh, we've had teenagers go and help. Um, all kinds of, of adults have volunteered. And so there you go. You thought your spoon was big. I know it's huge, isn't it? All right, let's, I'm going to clean up here just a bit. And then I'm going to check on the cake. Be right back. Uh, the cake looks almost there. Hold on, I gotta stick the toothpick in. Uh, mm -mm -mm. Just a few seconds more. How many were not here on Tuesday? Were you not here on Tuesday? If you were not here on Tuesday, I wasn't. I wasn't in the kitchen. I was out of the kitchen on Tuesday. Rebecca, Rebecca, <laughs> Jessica stayed here, and we went on a field trip. And Christy was our hostess. We did it at her house on Tuesday. And one of the things I was kind of showcasing, remember, I'm not sponsored. I don't get paid. People don't send me stuff for free. I bought all this stuff. But I saw this on the Pioneer Woman. And I am just, I can't wait for us to try this on the show. You know what a bath bomb is, right? So the bath bomb has sodium bicarbonate in it and plus all the smells. And once you put it in your bathtub, it it froths all up and it's fizzy all over your tub and it releases all the wonderful smells. Well, so I saw the Pioneer Woman talking about these and I ordered it. Ca Cowboy Caviar would be easy to tote as well. You are correct, Lydia. That's another good idea. Anyway, when I ordered it, it said it would be like three months. So I was like, oh, okay. And I kind of forgot about it, but it came um, Monday. And so I was like, all that. Anyway, so they're called broth bombs. And I think this is so cool. So each one of them so has a little thing and it says, this one says Scarborough Fair. And it says a melody of fragrant or herb, familiar herbs. Think pot pie and folk rock. Um, so this one has um, parsley, sage, salt, black pepper, rosemary, thyme, and turmeric. Um, and then they give you a suggested recipe. I'm gonna open these because these are for me anyway. Anyway, here's what it looks like. Look at that. So it looks just like a bath bomb. You'd heat your water, right? And then you drop this in there and psh, just like a bath bomb, except instead of releasing all the lavender and you know stuff for your bath to make you feel better, it, it releases all the spices out of there. How cool is that? Cool, cool, cool. Anyway, they're made in a, um, um, a wait, where was it? Hold on, I read it. They're handmade in a shared commercial vegan kitchen. I know, those are the bomb, aren't they? Uh, so when they give you a suggested recipe because it's made in a vegan kitchen, they don't suggest to put meat, but you certainly could if you wanted to. So the suggested recipe they give is you add white beans, broccoli, hash browns, kale. I would not add the kale. Um, sliced carrots, onion, chopped garlic, and water. And you add it after the bath bomb does its thing, or the broth bomb does its thing, and it makes a gallon of stew, a gallon, which they say is the equivalent of 16 restaurant style uh, size bowls. So I thought that was really cool. I bought all the different flavors. There was eight flavors and it was $34. Um, that's the name of the company is Broth Bomb. And uh, somebody on Tuesday actually found the link but you could do a Google search for a broth bomb. They're also available on Amazon. Again, I don't know the broth bomb people. I haven't tried the broth bomb yet, uh, but it looks really cool. And so I can't wait to try it on the show. Maybe on Saturday, we will, we will do that. Okay, I think our cake is ready. So uh, we're gonna take the cake out. Uh, actually, Jessica's gonna take the cake out. And here's what we're gonna do. While the cake is cooling, um, we're gonna make the frosting. Here, you can set it right there. All right, so the cake is over there. We don't need it to totally cool down, but we do need it to be a little bit because you don't wanna start your frosting until you get ready. Now, my other pot disappeared that I melted everything in. Um, no, not that, the pot that I used. Uh, let me see if I have another one I can use. Um, well, you know when you give your daughter, we'll use, we'll use this. Oh, she got it. Okay. 
when you give your daughter your other set of pots and pans, then you're like, ah, hey, Catherine, good to see you, Kathy, good to see you. Oh, they're food, yeah. No, 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 you don't soak your feet in them, silly girl. It's food, it's for making like a pot of stew or a pot of soup or a pot of stoop, like Rachel Ray says. All right, so we're gonna need, is that one broth bomb enough seasoning for, yes, it is. One, one is enough for each. I haven't tried them, so we'll see. But they have curry ones. They have, um, what is this one? This one's got um, ginger, turmeric, rosemary, salt, cloves. So that would be fun. Um, this one has sage, black pepper, coriander, salt, and paprika. So there's all kinds of different ones. Very fun. All right, so we need a, another saucepan because now we're gonna cook our frosting. So for our frosting, we need half a cup of butter. So this is, I think this is salted. I'm uncertain, but there you go. Salted or unsalted. A half a cup of butter obviously is one stick of butter, right? Uh, so in we go in our little pot. We're gonna need six tablespoons of sour cream. Don't you hate that? Six tablespoons, okay. But wait, do I need any powder? No, okay. So, one, two, I'm making lots of noise. Three, four, goodness, five. See, I should have just scooped, right? Six, you should try the broth bomb. I'm, I think I am, Lydia. I think maybe, maybe Saturday, maybe Saturday will do that. Okay, uh, then we're gonna need a fourth of a cup Fourth of a cup, yes, of unsweetened cocoa powder, because we do. Have you guys seen that video where that kid thinks it's chocolate and takes a big old spoonful of the unsweetened <laughs> cocoa powder and then does one of these? It's funny, it's funny. All right, did I say hello, Janice? Hello, Janice. All right, so there we go. This, this one is almost empty. Okay, a quarter cup of cocoa powder and then we need a teaspoon of vanilla. And, wait, let me see. Oh, we're gonna put the, that in, in a second. Okay, so we're gonna put, I shouldn't have put the sour cream in there. Oh, well. All right, we're gonna put this on top of the stove. Come on. Oh, it does that. The stove knows, the stove knows. So I told you guys about our water damage. Um, you were that kid. The video is hilarious and the poof of cocoa that he's used. It is, it is really. Um, the, I told you all about our water damage. So our master bathroom uh, flooded, our master bedroom flooded and our laundry room flooded. And so my MacGyver husband figured out how to uh, use a radiator hose. He cut the pipes and then he used a radiator hose and clamps. Um, but we're, we're in line. We have to wait on the rest. The insurance adjuster came out. We have to wait on the restoration guy to come out and demolish the shower and the laundry room wall. And then we're in line for somebody to come and fix everything. It'll be a long time. Luckily, we have water and we have a shower. We have another shower to use, so that's good. Okay. We haven't heard any noise. And I have to say a big shout out to um, 3P, I'm pretty sure it's 3P or Triple P, maybe it's Triple P Services. And so it's another person from our church, Ricky Pagnozzi. Um, he uh, is an elder with our uh, Children's Ministry Council. <clears throat> and he does wonderful things for the kids, but he also has a business. And we really needed the patio out back refinished because it looks awful, awful. Um, and so they were supposed to actually redo the patio last week, last Thursday, but of course we had snow vid here. So they're out this morning. And so, um, uh, I try to use people from our church because I just, that's your family of faith. I think you should support your husband loves the vanilla pudding and graham cracker dessert. Janet, my husband loves that too. It is so good. How are the dogs? Um, well, you know, we all slept in the den, and so we had four dogs, four, no, three dogs and a cat, and then at one point we had another one. 
Oh, the onion for an apple. I know, right? That's just yucky. Yucky, yucky, yucky. Well, then I'm going to get a this. That is disgusting, I tell you. Okay, our butter has melted. Look at that, okay? Our butter has melted. Let's all hit the share button. Well, you know what? Yeah, I, that would be nice. Um, not, let me just say this. I appreciate the share. Not just for, um, for me. You know what? I'm gonna do this over. I know we're running late, but I'm not gonna serve something like this to, um, I'm gonna pour this out. Where's my bowl? I'm pouring this out. And we're gonna start over. Um, remember I said I shouldn't have, um, I shouldn't have put the sour cream in there. So of course, when I melted everything, could you get the new cocoa powder out? When I melted everything, the sour cream curdled. So I'm not using that. It's, it doesn't matter that it's not for my family. It matters that we do it right, okay? So another stick of butter. I'm so sorry, and I know we are running long today. My apologies. But anyway, if you would share, not for me, not for Cindy's Kitchen, um, but for um, uh, a quarter cup, uh, but for the, the mission, you know, that maybe somebody would see that and say um, they wanted to support the mission. Okay, let me do this again. I'm so sorry. But, but I don't want bad stuff going to the mission. So that, that would be a bad thing. All right, so as soon as the butter melts and we mix it all in with the sour, with the, uh, the cocoa powder, because that's what went in there, then we're gonna add six tablespoons of, of sour cream after we take it off, right? Um, a teaspoon of vanilla, and we're also gonna add three and a half cups of powdered sugar. So remember, this is the wrong one. Okay, remember I told you I was using all of my canisters today, so here, here is the powdered sugar one. So we're gonna need three and a half cups of that. Um, so we'll do, because um, uh, I, I can't, the cup won't fit in here. Well, maybe, what is that? Oh, okay, oh, it'll fit. All right, so let me double check this. Almost there, almost there. I'm so sorry, but you know, again, we gotta, oh, hello from Denton, Texas, Laurie. Good to see you. The butter was out, so at least it was room temperature, so it'll, it'll melt quickly. Okay, there we go, all melted. All right, so now this is not curdled. <laughs> this is just cocoa powder and butter, so that's much better, right? We, we don't want that. All right, so we've mixed all this up, and now we're gonna start, I'm gonna go ahead and add the powdered sugar. So again, three and a half cups. So, oh, that's like a big rock. This is a half a cup, so half a cup, one and a half. That's why this, this is so good. Two cups, because the frosting is so awesome. Two and a half. Three cups. Three and a half. There we go. Now we're gonna need our teaspoon of vine or vinegar. Ha! A teaspoon of vanilla extract. There we go and our six tablespoons, hey Carolyn from Missouri, our six tablespoons of sour cream. Two, three, four, five, six. All right, now the only difficult, the bad thing about this is I was going to make us one, but now I'm not certain I have enough sour cream to make us one. Okay, I'm not gonna use this thing because you know how I feel about that, right? I'm gonna use the Danish batter whisk. How's the weather in Missouri, Caroline? All right, so we're gonna mix this up. Oh, you can't smell it, but I can. Oh, we need smell-o-vision. We need smell-o-vision. I suppose that if you um, needed to, you, you probably could. Um, use your hand mixer, but 
I kind of like just leaving it in the pot and, um, and going to town like this, like spring. Yeah, did you know it was 80 degrees in Houston yesterday? 80 degrees. How could it be 80 degrees when it was seven last week, right? All right, just mixing it up. Hopefully I'll get almost all the lumps out. We shall see. There's a few in there, but I don't think that bothers me. That just lets you know it's homemade and we didn't like get it out of a tub. Okay, now we're gonna bring over our cake. We're finally done, we're finally done. This is crazy, I know. All right, so there's our beautiful Texas sheet cake. It is still warm. And so you know the rule, when you make a cake, you have to let your cake cool completely before you frost it. But not the Texas sheet cake. On the Texas sheet cake, you want to frost it while it is warm. Okay, let me get my spatula. Um, we'll use my purple one. Purple. All right. And so we're just going to pour. I usually pour down the center and then, and then go. So it makes it a little easier to spread if I start it in the center, right? Oh, you notice that I haven't licked my fingers once in this whole show. You were surprised. But normally, you know, I'm cooking for my family, and so it doesn't matter. If I'm cooking for somebody else, I do actually pay attention. All right, we're gonna tilt down just a little bit so you can see the warm yumminess. Some of you may be saying, oh, well, perhaps this is like the poke cake. Why didn't you poke holes? Um, I've never poked holes in a Texas sheet cake. Quite frankly, because the cake is still warm, and the frosting is going on warm, there's enough yumminess going on that you don't need to poke the holes. But, you know, if you want to, wholly up to you if you're making it for yourself. All right, the mission of Yahweh, minus two degrees. Oh, Lord, goodness. Everybody down here is on a list to see a plumber. Everybody, everybody. And I know that a lot of people are like, well, didn't you wrap your pot? Yeah, everybody wrap their pipes. Our pipes are just not, our insulation is not um, for that low of a temperature. It's for high of a temperature, but not low. Okay, and there we go, look at that. I am gonna lick, because this is not going to them, this is going to me. Mm. Mm -mm -mm -mm. The frosting, oh, it's like homemade fudge. That's how good it is. <laughs> anyway. There's our show. I'm so sorry we ran late today, but we made a huge uh, Mexican goulash and a big, huge Texas sheet cake for the mission of Yahweh. Share the video or share the link to the mission of Yahweh. Mm, help these folks out. These are women and children that are homeless. They just need to step up. It's not a permanent thing. They just need a little help. So today, we uh, made the meal for the mission. It's a blessing. It truly is a blessing to be able to support such a wonderful mission. And I appreciate you guys watching today. Have a lovely rest of the day from Cindy's Kitchen. I hope your kitchen is full of quick, easy, and yummy meals. And we'll see you guys again on Saturday. Have a great one. Bye-bye.